Philippe Lazzarini, you've just met with our Foreign Minister Penny Wong. What was your message to her? I have uh, informed your minister that uh, UNRWA has taken the decision to commission an independent review to look at uh, all the allegations uh, regarding UNRWA and its activities in uh, Gaza. As you know, there have been quite a number of uh, what I would say smear campaign, and I do believe it is important now to have a review to look into all these allegations, to look at what the intent behind is, but also to look at uh, when confirmed, what is the response the agency is giving, and depending on the response, what would be the recommendation to improve it. Can I ask whether that review was requested by our foreign minister? The new foreign minister has asked what the agency is intending to do to address uh, these uh, neutrality issues uh, that uh, the agency is uh, under criticism. And uh, I have informed uh, the uh, minister that uh, a lot of thoughts have been put into this, uh, and maybe now it is time to go beyond what the agency say says and what the detractor of the agency are saying, mm -hmm. and hence the importance, in fact, uh, to have this uh, review. So today I have announced uh, uh, the intent of the review, and I hope that in the coming week, 10 days, uh, I will be able to inform, in fact, not only on the scope of the review, but also who will undertake the review. So Australia has donated $6 million to your agency. Can you give us a sense of how that money will be spent? Well, listen, now needs are enormous, especially in the context of the Gaza crisis, which is absolutely unprecedented. And the support of Australia will be used, in fact, within our current emergency humanitarian response. As you know, in the Gaza Strip, you have a looming starvation, you have widespread uh, hunger, we have also a looming uh, disease uh, outbreak uh, taking place. So the needs are absolutely enormous and we need the mobilization of the entire uh, international community to support our activities, but also to reverse the tide of a looming catastrophe. Well, you've spoken of Gaza as hell on earth uh, and you've just been on your fourth visit there. What conditions have you found on the ground? Each, each time I go back to Gaza, there is something new which strikes me. Uh, the last time I went, this week, in fact, I spent three days. Uh, I have seen all of a sudden, uh, you know, plastic uh, makeshift uh, uh, mushrooming uh, uh, between uh, Rafa and Der El Bala, basically uh, on a stretch of uh, 20 kilometers. You have hundreds of thousands of people now uh, living uh, in the street, in this plastic uh, makeshift, they sleep uh, on concrete. Now it's winter, it's very cold. And what I have seen also is that people now are just in automatic uh, survival mode. Um, people are more and more anxious about uh, the future. They realize that life might not be back uh, the way they would have uh, expected. And they also expect uh, to be in this uh, I would say, uh, miserable uh, condition for the while to come. Uh, you're the main international agency operating in Gaza. How have your operations changed since October 7? I mean, what capacity are you operating at compared to uh, pre-October 7? Oh, Pre-October 7, we were primarily providing human development uh, activities. We were providing education to 300,000 children. We were uh, providing primary health care across uh, the Gaza Strip. Uh, since October 7, the agency has been in a, uh, in a complete uh, uh, humanitarian mode or humanitarian response uh, mode. Uh, now the focus is primarily on saving life. Uh, the focus is primarily on providing uh, uh, food and also providing primary health care. I have to say that we are still lagging behind. The needs are enormous and the aid that trickling into Gaza is not commensurate to these uh, needs. Uh, you've said in recent days that more trucks are getting through the, uh, the border crossings into Gaza, but you've spent time at the Rafah crossing where aid convoys are inspected uh, before moving in. What's that process like? It's an extraordinary cumbersome process uh, taking place. Uh, basically, a truck coming from uh, 
Egypt from El Arish, which is the main logistical hub in the Sinai. It takes an average to, uh, of five to seven days for the truck to reach destination. And here we are talking about a stretch of no more than 100 kilometers. And this is primarily due to the inspection and to the bureaucracy uh, uh, taking place. So the process is extremely cumbersome. But once we have uh, the aid inside the Gaza Strip, uh, we have uh, the challenges also of uh, moving uh, uh, within um, a military uh, operation environment. Uh, and the deconfliction is also taking a lot of uh, energy and uh, present a lot of uh, impediment to our response. Well, finally, you've warned against the rise of dehumanising language in this conflict. What concerns you? What concerns me the most is that this conflict has been so divisive that uh, empathy is not, uh, is not expressed anymore on both sides. Either you have an international community expressing deep empathy and compassion for Israel, which has gone through a big uh, collective uh, trauma after the horrible massacre of uh, October 7, or people are just uh, expressing empathy to the Palestinian, but in reality, having a unilateral empathy is reinforcing the polarization which is prevailing here in the region. And in fact, uh, I'm drawing the attention about the fact uh, that the plight uh, of the Israeli and the plight of the Palestinian need to be equally acknowledged and the life of an Israeli is as important as the life of a Palestinian and vice versa. Philippe Lazzarini, thank you so much for talking to us tonight. Thank you so much for inviting me.